one of the most popular female divinity from the Norse pantheon, twin sister of Freyr and daughter of Njord. Beautiful and many-functioned, Freya features heavily as a fertility goddess stemming from her place in the Vanir family of gods who handle things related to fertility along her own area of expertise regarding love, lust and beauty but also with magic and sometimes death. Freya was the Scandinavian goddess who watched over the crops and new life, mainly appearing in many myths as lover or object of lust. Therefore she was concerned with affairs of the heart and likely played an important role in the old Scandinavian religion. The starting point of Freya's many functions comes from her role as a fertility divinity. She was called Venatis because of her Vanir descent while her other name Horn, probably comes from a word meaning flax or linen in Old Norse, which was an important material cultivated early on in Scandinavia, and was thought to ward off evil while bringing fertility to mankind. Flax manufacture was also known as to have been a female affair, and just because bridal dresses were made of linen, Freya became an entity defender of love and weddings. In German stories she is assimilated with Frigg as they were both of equal nobility, and are possibly separate aspects of a single divine principle. Other accounts mention her as to have been associated with a form of witchcraft involving a seeress and some kind of divination. Freya is often depicted as a young and beautiful blonde hair woman wearing an armor over a flowing gown, sometimes bearing a shield and a spear. It is believed that she is the most accessible divinity for people to call upon, and from her name came the designation Frova or Lady, which became the sign of respect women bore ever since. Playing a major role in erotic poetry, Freya had special authority in relationships involving love, so it was good to call on her for help. Yet she was not the only goddess of love whom mankind had recourse. Freya was born in Vanaheim, but moved to Asgard as a hostage when peace was made between the Vanir and the Asir. As the story says, she was delivered over by the Vanir and was accepted among the Asgardians as the goddess of love and fertility. While Freya may have originally been paired in a brother-sister couple with Freyr, our most comprehensive source when it comes to Norse mythology through the Icelandic mythographer Snorri Sturluson, has her down as the wife of a deity named Odor, whom have gone missing into foreign lands inexplicably leaving Freya behind who would later wander the earth in search of him while weeping tears of gold. Being also a goddess of wealth as attested to by many poetic references that link her to treasure, for her tears are said to have been made of gold. In addition, both Freya's daughters' names, Nas and Gersami, meaning something along the lines of preciousness or treasure and were possibly used in later poetry as manifestations of Freya herself. According to some accounts, many of Freya's various names are those she acquired during her wanderings among the unknown looking for her husband, however her journey in search of him are completely undocumented. Freya was given the realm of Folkvanger, and given the fact that all Scandinavian warriors who bravely die in battle were collected by Valkyries, but as she was closely associated with death, she claimed half of these heroes for her own then carried them to Folkvanger while the others went to Valhalla. As the god of wisdom and magic, Odin had the closest association with the dead, while other Vanir deities have no such connection. However, Freya's relationship with magic is also well known, and Snorri Sturluson relayed how it was Freya who first taught a certain shamanistic magic among the gods of Asgard. Finally, the way Freya chose slain warriors to be on her as opposed to Valkyries, carries her into more ferocious spheres functioning as a goddess of death, and even battle itself. This link between Freya and Odin, as well as Odin's own strong proficiency with magic, led many to think that Odin and Freya's husband could have originally been one and the same individual. Freya had several magical and valuable items, among which a cloak of bird feathers that allowed anyone wearing it to change into a falcon and fly great distances. In addition, she was said to take the form of a she-goat at night and was in the habit of traveling around the Norse mythological cosmos on a carriage pulled by cats, and sometimes too, she would ride upon a boar with golden bristles not to be confused with that of her twin brother. 
Her last but most popular attribute was the Briesingamon necklace, a golden jewelry with a tremendous significance. This necklace is believed to have made the goddess irresistible to both men and gods, it also supported any army that she favored on battlefield. Her ownership of the Briesingamon is alluded in a text describing how she came into its possession, but its most famous myth concerns its theft which was preserved in a such fragmentary and tricky way that it is now pretty hard to come up with one comprehensive story. The most detailed version which is also the youngest and thus not the pinnacle of reliability, describes how Freya slept with four dwarves in exchange for it. The goddess accepted their bargain and received the golden jewelry, but upon knowing what she had done to obtain this necklace, Odin ordered the trickster god to steal it by assuming the form of a fly to get into her bedroom as she was asleep. After successfully stealing the necklace, Loki was caught up by Heimdall, who after a struggle managed to retrieve then returned the jewelry back to Freya. In another version, she was told to instigate war among men by any mean if she wanted to be given the Brisingamen back to her. Just like this story goes, the handed-down mythology emphasizes Freya's role in all things related to sexuality, and her desirability was all over again the core theme. In the extant mythology, Freya often feature as an irresistible item of lust mainly in the eyes of giants. In one tale she was kidnapped by one of them who took her to Jotunheim hoping to marry her to one of his sons, but she rejected all of them. Another story tells of Thor's hammer being stolen by the giant Trim, who refused to return the hammer unless getting his hands on the goddess. In the tale of the master builder, the giant who was to construct a wall around Asgard demanded Freya to be part of his payment. As for other related myths, a certain giant entered Asgard and boasted he would destroy all gods, except Sif and Freya whom he will take to his home but was fortunately defeated by Thor. Besides the goddess Freya being the price of many things which other gods try to avoid paying, other myths however reinforce Freya's supposedly free and considerable sexuality, for she was reputed to have had relationships with many suitors including gods and other beings. There is a poem in the Poetic Edda, in which Loki accused all goddesses of sexual indiscretion especially Freya, whom according to him had several affairs with all gods of Asgard. But some account says that she played the oldest profession, for she gave herself to four dwarfs in order to obtain a beautiful necklace. This sexual history and her fondness for erotic poetry made plausible the assertion of Snorri, that it is towards Freya whom one must turn in the affairs of lust and love. Presumably this attachment to human love is consistent with the notion of the Vanir as fertility divinities. We might reasonably expect a fertility deity to be associated with the dead, but in this mythology at least, the evidence all goes in the other direction. As a fertility divinity, Freya would have taken up a central role in old Scandinavian religion and society, for playing a part in the circle of life and death. She is one of the few individual goddesses who had a major role in the more official religious cult, as she incorporates many traits that can be found in fertility divinities from all over the world, among which is a clear connection to death. The goddess Freya is famed for her cheerfulness and the worship devoted to her was erotic in nature. We now know that she was a potent force in the last years of paganism in Iceland, because of a famous incident recounted in connection with the Christianization. At the Althing parliament, a supporter of the conversion was banned for blasphemy towards the goddess because of a song he recited calling her in disgraceful names, showing that she was still important enough for people not to successfully get away with these sort of things. Even though the Old Norse sources do not specifically detail the existence of a cult to Freya, but a large number of places in Sweden and Norway are related to her name, indicating a clear worship of her which even pointed to a public cult, as opposed to a domestic worship one would expect for a goddess. It is obvious that people of Iceland on the verge of conversion to Christianity still had Freya clearly on their mind, as the most renowned goddess of Scandinavian mythology. Hopefully this video was interesting enough, and if you've made it this far, do consider leaving it a like, subscribe and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. 
And as always, stay curious.